Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hockey fans, are you ready to Brave the Wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey. Brave the Wild is available on thesportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to this show. It is a pleasure to be back on board with you again today. And I just want to say again, thank you all so much for your listenership. It is absolutely appreciated. You'll notice some changes to the show this week and maybe for the following weeks because... (laughs) Well, my main computer is, well, it's not working. It's uh, it's down. So the files are not lost, but they are unavailable. So I'm using <laughs> a completely different computer right now, trying to do the best I can until I can get those files again and get that main computer up and running. So just letting you know, you're going to be hearing different sounds and all that stuff got, got put together what I could to get you a show today. Still going to keep them coming. And uh, again, thank you so much for your listenership. Let's get on to the wild. We're going to keep the show pretty similar to what it's been over the course of the past few weeks. A three-segment show. You got the, uh, the you got the reviews, the previews, and then check in on the Iowa Wild and such. So there you go. Let's jump right into it. The Minnesota Wild, an extremely positive week, as I was predicting. Just a, a minor flip-flop, per se, with uh, Vancouver and Winnipeg. That's about it. I mean... A, very, 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 very positive week for the Minnesota Wild. I mean, about as positive as you could pretty much expect. As we started with the uh, last Saturday with the Colorado Avalanche coming to Minnesota, February 7th. Not really a whole lot to say about this game other than Devin Dubnik was just absolutely fantastic. Apologize for that. That's a <laughs> that's a no-no. Uh, one nothing Minnesota. That's it. In Excel Energy Center. Um, we're back to the boring Wild again, but hey, they're winning. Not the boring, but winning Wild. That's the good news. Dubnik, jeez, another shout-out for Devin Dubnik. This is his fourth of the year. Absolutely insane. Very cool. Really nice to see Charlie Coyle score another goal. He ended up being the star of the game. Barlamov was unbelievable throughout the game. The Minnesota Wild had so many chances to score, but Barlamov just slammed the door. And a very uh, very deserving number two star of the game, Marcus Scandella, number three star. He had an assist on Charlie Coyle's goal. That was midway through the first period, and that was about it for the scoring. I mean, and that was it for the scoring. Multiple chances along the way, but Varlamov, just unbelievable. And the Minnesota Wilds puck possession just dominated the entire way. Devin Dubnik only faced 18 shots. A few were pretty good, but overall, the defense absolutely just stifling the Colorado Avalanche over the course of this one. What's really amazing is you look at this statistic... <laughs> You know how many goals the Colorado Avalanche have scored against the Minnesota Wild this season? Well, he <laughs> absolutely zero. Isn't that something? I mean, that's just, uh, that's pretty cool. I <laughs> It's like you think about that, and you're like, wait, am I seeing this right? I am. Yeah, because remember how Darcy Kemper, you know, the greatest goalie ever, you know, he's the future, he's the next Ken Dryden for the Minnesota Wild. You know, he's, he's the one, he's the king. He's the guy. He got two shutouts pretty much to open up the season. And we were hoping that, oh boy, this is probably going to come to an end at some point. But hopefully it won't come crashing down too badly. And it did. But eh, we'll see what happens there. Devin Dubna continuing things. Continue where we left off. The Colorado Avalanche yet to score against the Wild. Wow. Uh, it's like you think about that. That's pretty cool. And it makes me smile. It brings a big smile to my face. Because remember how cocky they were last year in that playoff series? They drove me nuts. Their fan base was obnoxious. They were like one cheap shot after another, slamming guys down on the ice, and no no calls whatsoever. The fan base is obnoxious. I, I hate Colorado Avalanche fans and Denver Nuggets fans. They, they're obnoxious. You know, and the thing, that was a city I wanted to move to at one point in time. 
Yeah, screw that. Anyhow, <laughs> again, not the most exciting game ever, and we got five more to get to overall. Just a nice defensive effort by the Wild. Just clamming down on those Colorado Avalanche. So we're going to continue here as we go. Vancouver game. 5-3 to three victory for the Minnesota Wild. Monday, February the 9th. Also going to be talking about some injuries and some guys that had to come in to, well, we called up to replace them. We'll talk about that very shortly as we continue this segment. 5-3 to three win for Minnesota in Exxon Energy Center. Just, wow, fantastic. I picked the Wild to beat the Winnipeg Jets and to lose to Vancouver in a in, a, in overtime. Ended up being the exact opposite. The uh, Winnipeg Jets won in overtime and the Vancouver Canucks um, we beat them in uh, regulation. Yeah, I mean, when the Wild went up 3 nothing, I was just so excited. I, I couldn't believe it <laughs> in the game. But, or actually, they went 2 nothing. I'm thinking about something else. I apologize. That was last night's game against... Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that later. And, of course, the last time we played the Vancouver Canucks as well, that was another 3-0 type of game. Yeah, Jordan Schrader with a really nice shot against his uh, former team, scoring his first goal of the season. He's up for, for a reason because of injuries, unfortunately. Yeah, just uh, very disappointing for all of us here in town. Jason Zucker, yeah, only played two minutes or three minutes in this game because he got hit and has a broken collarbone. Ryan Carter, only a minute and a half, injured as well, or injured very early in the game. Only two shifts for Carter, four shifts for Zucker. The second best goal scorer on the team right now. Just an explosive guy. Great speed, great moves, and he's become a really nice defensive player as well. Remember, that was the problem with Jason Zucker for years coming into the uh, coming into the, the past couple of years. That's why he wasn't able to make the NHL roster. He would he would make it early, and then they'd end up sending him down. Or the second year, he was hurt. And now, well, Zucker's out for three months. That sucks. Uh, we already know that uh, Matt Cook is out six to eight weeks with a sports hernia. And Ryan Carter, also out for an extended period of time. Great. <laughs> Very disappointing indeed. Uh, Jordan Schrader wasn't up for that purpose. He was up because of Matt Cook being out. <laughs> and for some reason beyond my understanding, the Minnesota Wild, including uh, Mike Yo especially, doesn't like Brett Sutter. And I like what Brett Sutter brought to the Wild. Defense, intensity, and he, shucks, he even got three assists in just a couple games. Not bad. I... I guess Mike Yo just doesn't like him. But Jordan Schrader's been playing really well. And he's, he's explosive. I think he could help replace the Jason Zucker. Because Stefan Vader sure as hell isn't going to do that. <laughs> he's more there to replace Ryan Carter. You know, physical, you know, fourth line type of guy. Well, Stefan Vey was about the most ultimate, like, fourth line player there has ever been, right? When it comes to the Minnesota Wild. And he's been on the up and down with the Minnesota Wild for the last, like, 17 years, it seems like. Even though he uh, left via free agency to the uh, New Jersey Devils, the Minnesota Wild wound up trading for him years later <laughs> in the Merrick Zidlicky trade. Hilarious. Funny. Very funny. Uh, Jason Pominville beginning to pick up the slack. I mean, it's just just like clockwork. He gets his... <laughs> I believe, which which number was it? Uh, he gets his, at this point, it was his 10th goal of the year. So there he finally got to double digits as Tom, Thomas Vanek gets that too. Along the way here. Guys recognizing here that, hey, you know, Jason Zucker being out, that's not good. And we need to pick up the slack of the scoring. These guys should have been scoring anyway. I mean, Pominville's the kind of guy that should get 30, 35 goals. 25 at least. 10 goals. It's like halfway through February here, almost. Okay, well, he got his 10th goal. Vanek and assist. A wonderful pass. Miko Koivu really, really picking up the slack along the way this week. Just played phenomenal hockey. Three assists in this game, and this was the beginning of Miko Koivu's extremely improved play, especially in the box scores. But overall, just he's he's everywhere, making great defensive plays, making great passes, physical. He's actually looking like a leader. But you know me, I, I ain't buying it because you know he he does this every year where he looks really great for a while and then he dips right back down into no man's land. But we'll just have to hope and pray that maybe just to, just maybe this time he can keep playing well and stop screwing around and not, not lose his uh, not lose his moxie that he's building up here because it's a wonderful thing to see. Nino Niederreiter, a guy who scored a lot of goals early in the season, including a hat-trick. He had 10 goals about like three months ago. He finally, well, he gets his 16th goal along the way. Ryan Suter, only his second goal of the year on the power play, but it's because he gets like 90 assists every season. No, about 40 or so. 35, 40 assists a year and maybe a couple goals. 
really nice, powerful shot that went in this time. Because you know, most of his, I mean, most of the time he's putting the shot on net during the power play or whatever. In this case, the power play, and uh, it gets deflected by a Charlie Coyle, a, a Parisi, most of the time. But in this time, this case, <laughs> Koivu and Parisi assisted in this one because Suter was able to well get the puck through. That's pretty much where things went there. And a great, great feed from uh, Spurgeon, Kyle Brozniak, able to finish. And we're going to hear a negative side of Spurgeon here in the next night. But a wonderful centering pass that Brozniak wristed that one in there on a one-timer. Seventh goal of the season. Fantastic. Vancouver made it semi-interesting early in the third period, or actually late in the third period, making it 5-3 to three when Vancouver was able to go with the empty net and try to attack. But unfortunately for them, Dubnik just was able to slam the door and Wild were able to get things going in the right direction and get out of Excel Energy Center with yet another victory and to edge closer to the postseason. Six games above 500 at that point in time last Monday. Gosh, I mean, I should, <laughs> more than standing room in this in this one. Almost 19,000 people in the Excel Energy Center with seats about 18,000. So, yeah, uh, people very, very excited to watch your Minnesota Wild and who can blame them. Dubnik officially stopped 22 shots in this game. And Ryan Miller, who really, I've been saying for a long time, one of the most overrated goalies in the NHL. What were the Vancouver Canucks thinking getting Ryan Miller? What were the St. Louis Blues thinking last season getting Ryan Miller? Yeah, the Wild kicked his ass. And uh, rock and roll, I'll take it. Eddie Lack stopped all 14 shots he faced after the fifth goal was scored by Kyle Brozniak just midway through the second period, giving the Wild a 5-2 lead at the time. The Sedin the the Sedin sisters assisted on Ryan Stanton's goal, but that's about it. Yeah, they're obviously great players, but they're annoying, <laughs> annoying to watch, and everybody hates it. They're basically scared to death of contact, and uh, well, rock and roll, we'll take it. Ha <laughs> ha to the Vancouver Canucks, an old bitter rival that uh, isn't quite as bitter as this next one. They're kind of uh, very similar to the old Vancouver Canucks back in the day when the Wild used to really go at it with them. Uh, minus the uh, minus the elite scoring that the Vancouver Canucks had back in uh, the 0203 era or so, when, the, when when they had Morrison and and you know and and others Bertuzzi was scoring like at a really high clip as well, but it will go along with his over the top physicality. Tuesday, February the tenth. Well, the same birthday as my my dad and my twin nephews. Got to like that. <laughs> Winnipeg Jets. Host the Minnesota Wild at MTS Center. Yep, MTS Center, which seats only 15,000 people. They better, uh, man, kind of sad, only 15,000, but hey, uh, at least they're selling it out, right? <laughs> and the Wild do not win this one. It was a, uh, they came out of the gate extremely tired, totally out of it, just could not seem to keep up with the Winnipeg Jets. They're skating all around us like crazy, yet Dubnik was still just absolutely unbelievable the entire game. Really appreciate it, without a doubt. Not a, not, not a fun game to watch because it just there was no energy from the Wild. They're exhausted after going 8 bleep against the Vancouver Canucks just, you know, 24 hours earlier. Dubnik stopped 32 of 34 shots. Swiss was getting peppered all night. The Wild were getting a lot of shots on goal, but it was mostly just, uh, I mean, they were shots on goal. They weren't like great plays or anything. There were a couple here and there, but Hutchinson was fantastic in the game, and he's the better goalie anyway. With with Winnipeg, not, uh, he's better than that Pavlicius guy who's, who's injured. So, unfortunately for the Wild, Mikhail, uh, Michael Hutchinson got the job done, stopping twenty nine to thirty shots. Uh, Jason Pominville again, with Zucker being out, was able to score a goal on a bad turnover by Winnipeg midway through the third period. I mean, this was a shutout game. <laughs> this was a shutout game until about eight minutes into the third period when Toby Enstrom scored. <laughs> to make it one nothing, and then Pominville just three minutes later on a turnover by Winnipeg was able to score unassisted 11th goal of the season and then into overtime we go, just had a bad feeling about this because the Wild had some nice chances late but they just were not getting it done and the next thing you know I mean, Winnipeg had the puck the whole time after that and it was so frustrating anytime the Wild it looked like they had some type of shot at something the puck would get taken away. The Winnipeg just had more energy the whole night, and it was frustrating as hell. While it looked like they were going to try to develop something, Spurgeon's bringing it into the zone after receiving a pass from Koivu, then does some kind of strange spin type of move, 
tries to uh, pass the puck, tries to pass it back to Sutter, and it's taken away by Dustin McFuglin, who is just a absolute thorn in our side. He's he's, he's kind of like the new Bertuzzi, minus the, you know, trying to kill people or something, trying to smash their head into the ice, but he's a physical, pain-in-the-butt type of player who actually has a little bit of talent as well. He's not a star like Bertuzzi could have been if he would have, like, you know, like, uh, yeah, if he wouldn't have gone as far as he did. Uh, but Bertuzzi just went on the break and made a great play and shot the puck over Dubnik's shoulder and, damn it, we lost in overtime. Huh, that was really frustrating because Bufluigan, just about every time there's any type of skirmish, he's in it, involving somebody, shoving somebody around, knocking somebody around. Just an annoying guy. He's a perfect fit for a team that you'd consider a, a major rival for many years to come. And hopefully the Wild can continue their uh, positive play against the Winnipeg Jets because, well, I mean, until this game, the Wild were fantastic against the Jets. So, unfortunately, uh, they won 4-3 to three against Winnipeg, lost in overtime, uh, okay, they won 4-3 to three before Thanksgiving back November the 16th. And then just after Christmas, we got a, uh, a point out of it against Winnipeg. That's when we were playing horribly. Yeah, we still almost won that game. Overtime loss to the Jets on Saturday the 27th. Then we beat them on a couple days later. <laughs> this is a home-and-home situation. We beat the Jets 3-2, to two, and then we lose in overtime, as mentioned. And now it goes all the way up to April 6th, which could be an absolutely humongous game. Uh, April 6th, as I was saying, hosted in XL Energy Center, the fifth and final game of the season series. Hopefully the Minnesota Wild can pull this one out. Right now we have the lead, per se, because we have two over. Uh, we have two regulation wins. Or actually, no, one regulation win. We, we, we won in overtime back in November, so this is one hell of a one hell of a rivalry building between these two teams because both of them are actually getting to be pretty good. Uh, obviously the Wild, very skilled, and the Winnipeg Jets are, well, they're, they're in the playoffs today if the season ended. Man, oh man, we'll talk more about the playoff situation as we get further and further into this segment, especially as we get to uh, post the actual preview or reviews themselves. The good news is the Wilds' defense has been pretty good. The, the bad news is their offense has been, well, it's inconsistent. Uh, the sad part is, though, it seems like when the Wilds start scoring goals, they start giving up goals as well. So that's the one thing. I mean, it's a very obvious trend here when you look at it. Like, one nothing type of games, we don't give up any goals and we don't score any. Um, these 2-1 to one games against Winnipeg and, uh, you know, Florida as well, just really putting the clamps down but hardly scoring worth, worth anything. <laughs> That's the frustrating part. And then you get kind of a more of a messy game against Carolina last night, Saturday, February 14th, and happy Valentine's to all of you out there. Uh, yep. But uh, let's move on to that Thursday game first, February the 12th. A 2-1 to one victory for the Minnesota Wild. Hey, I mean, just one point after another. And as you all know already, the Wild got a point in every single one of these six games. And the only one that they didn't get two points was that Winnipeg one that I just mentioned. Just fantastic. It's, it's amazing what a, what a difference a goalie makes. Man, and obviously having the Parisis healthy, the Pominvilles healthy. Even though Pominvilles have been scoring a lot, he still gets a trillion assists, as does Vanek. Speaking of Bombinville, again, off a wonderful pass from Miko Koivu, gets his 12th goal of the year. How about that? And then Zach Parisi on the power play, attacking the net. Just a terrific pass from Thomas Vanek, finishing that one. 22nd goal of the year on the power play, Parisi, just attacking the net. I mean, it's so exciting to see that, and uh, just nice to see our power play our power play converting. I mean, uh, on a regular basis now versus earlier in the season, 50% in this particular night, only one of two. Hey, we'll take it. That's fantastic. Uh, Nick Bustad, the former gopher, not that long ago with his 19th goal of the year. He is really, really getting the job done for the Florida Panthers, and they're in the same position the Minnesota Wild are in the Eastern Conference as they are just out of the wild card position as this one was definitely a heartbreaker for them. They were peppering Dubnik the rest of the way after this. Minnesota Wild looked pretty good early on, but afterwards it seemed like the Florida Panthers were dominating the puck, dominating the puck, and getting the getting shot after shot on Dubnik, but he was able to get it done. Um, ultimately, only 27 shots. It felt like a lot more, but mostly because Florida is just, just physical, aggressive, and they, they had the puck most of the second half of this game, uh, without a doubt. 
Roberto Luongo, there was a moment too. He got hit in the mask. I mean, that he got hit pretty. I mean, right almost in his throat. It almost missed his his mask and hit his throat. He was actually pretty lucky there. Um, this was just a crazy kind of a wild game, but at the same time, a very grinded out game, kind of like old school wild. You could say in the Jacques Lemaire era, kind of a neutral zone trap type of game. But um, Florida again was peppering Dubnik later on in this game. But the defense was good enough. The Wilds' offense was not too existent after Zach Parisi's goal. It got pretty quiet. They got some, again, some, some shots on net. But again, nothing all that special. Definitely not the kind of game that the Wild had back in November when we beat the Florida Panthers 4-1 to one in their house. That was fun. That was exciting. But Luongo, well, significantly better in this one. And Florida's defense better. And overall, the Florida Panthers in general, much better than they were back in, in November. As they were way out of playoff contention. Right now, again, like I mentioned, just about four points out. They are fighting for that Eastern Conference wildcard spot. And uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they made it, to be quite honest. Because uh, they look like a really strong team. And they almost had us in XL Energy Center. But Dubnik, again, the guy who's been the he's been the king of the wild. <laughs> he's been the king of the wild since he got here. And uh, it, it, it's just, I couldn't be happier to have him. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. So then we head into last night's just uh, slop fest. Saturday, February 14th. 6-3 to three over Carolina. A uh, not very good team. But a team with a good, you know, a pretty good goalie. Of course, this one wasn't because it was old Kudobin. Remember, remember who Dobin? Who Dobin? Who Dobin? <laughs> he used to be with the Wild long ago, and he actually had some good games, but we let him go pretty quickly. Well, Thomas Vanek, <laughs> off a horrible turnover, scoring right away, the easiest goal ever. Mikhail Granlund, Justin Fontaine, just a defensive breakdown by the Carolina Panthers, just a minute in. Granlund and Fontaine, that line is an interesting one. And uh, they score the first two goals of this game as Vanek gets his second goal of the game and his 12th of the year. Just a few minutes later, another feed from Fontaine and this is from Suter. Uh, the lines have been obviously been shuffling around again because of the injury situations and Mike Yo looking for the right chemistry because sometimes things are clicking and sometimes they're not with certain guys. The old Parisi, the old Granlin Parisi Pommenville line hasn't been together for quite a while. And remember how great it was last season? It just didn't click the way, the same way this year as it did last. That's the unfortunate part. This is an interesting one, though. Justin Fontaine all the way up to the second line. How about that? So he's basically the Zeka replacement, to be quite honest. At least that's the way Mike Yo is approaching things right now. Granlin, Mikhail Granlin, down to, how about I call him Michael? What the hell? Mikhail Granlin uh, down to the second line. With Thomas Vanek. So, all right. <laughs> it's a it's an interesting group, and they were fantastic the entire night. I mean, great defensive plays by Fontaine. Explosiveness to the net. Some shots on, on goal. Thomas Vanek awfully close to a hat trick in this one as well. I mean, just a really strong game by him. Uh, Fontaine, great energy, and Granlin's been playing way better since he came back from that injury. Sometimes when a guy like like that, a young guy who's a strong who's a strong prospect, a great up and comer, is having a down year for whatever reason, sometimes like a little injury can be a good thing because he can kind of sit down, relax, stop thinking too much, but then at the same time he can just kind of watch, watch and kind of have have a light bulb go off in his head somewhere, whatever it is. Like, "Oh, okay, I see what I'm doing wrong." Rather than pressing on the ice and, and holding a stick too hard, as they say. That's a cliche that's been going on forever in the NHL and in, and in hockey in general. Um, I remember that happened with Marion Gabrick years ago after his holdout, and I've talked about this before, but that little injury was uh, probably about the best thing that could have happened to Granlin. It's too bad it was as long as it was, because, I mean, out four to six weeks, that was no fun, but the fact that he came back, it was about four or five weeks He's been fantastic ever since. He's been physical, he's been attacking, and he's been aggressive. Where he came out with that same timid BS that he had in his his rookie season with the Wild when a lot of people thought he was another Pierre-Marc Bouchard at best. Just a non-physical, soft guy who wishes he was a center in the NHL but really isn't up to par. But then he came out strong last season, was awesome the whole season, and <laughs> probably the best player on the team. In fact, I gave him the regular season MVP last year. And now he's starting to look like that guy again. 
Very cool. Very cool. And I'm liking the chemistry on this line. Hopefully it lasts. Right now, the uh, Parisi's on a line with Koivu, who's been unbelievable. So he's back up to the top line because he's been playing so incredibly well. With uh, Parisi, Pominville, and Koivu, that's a very, very familiar line that a lot of us kind of knew for pretty much ever since Pominville got here. That was a very familiar line until there was the Grandland, Parisi, and Pominville line that I just fell in love with last season, and I think we all did. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, Grandland and, and Vanek assisting on a Prosser goal later on. They made it 4-1. to one. Jordan Schrader, an explosive goal, his second of the year. Just kind of went out on the break. Nice pass, nice feeds from the defenseman along the way. And Schrader just attacked the net and scored his second one along the way. Prosser also with his second goal again, like I said. And that was with that second line out there. Granlin, Vanek, and Fontaine were just awesome. And Prosser was able to finish. But then the Carolina Panthers started attacking because the Wild started relaxing. <laughs> and that's not good. The Panthers basically controlled the puck for an extended period throughout the entire second period. In fact, they dominated after Nate Prosser made it 4-2, 4-1, four four excuse me. Jeff Skinner, that's a name that's been around forever and ever. And then Jordan Stahl and Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Jordan, which is hilarious, but I'm just saying. It's, I know it's Michael Jordan, and that was his first assist of the year. But, yeah, <laughs> in Czechoslovakia, he is Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Elias Lindholm and Justin Falk assisting to make it uh, just a minute later, to make it 4-3. to three. And that had me a little worried, and a lot of us worried the rest of the way as the Panthers were attacking. Why do I keep calling them the Panthers? The Hurricanes, Carolina Hurricanes. Hopefully I haven't been calling them the Panthers. Freaking football. Carolina Hurricanes were on the attack throughout the night uh, on Dubnik at that point. Luckily, though, things would, would turn. As I'm sure Mike Yo and the boys and the players said, hey, we're killing ourselves out here. We cannot afford to lose a game like this. And then early on, that fourth line getting the job done. How about that? Stefan Veyu, Kyle Brozniak, and Eric Halla, who was able to finish with his fifth goal of the year, made it 5-3 to three again, only three minutes into the third period. That was uh, very refreshing to see those guys get things going. Stefan Veyu, he's back. He's back again, just like he was late last year. Seems to always come up late in the season. <laughs> and he's actually not bad, even though it's hilarious. He's actually not bad out there for the most part. It's just he's physical, and he actually kind of mixes it up and does get involved in the offense once in a while, and he did on this night. Only his second game back with the Wild. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then Breezy was able to launch an empty netter when the uh, Carolina Hurricanes pulled to Hudobin. Breezy was able to gain possession and just shoot it like about the length of the ice, about three-fourths of the rink down. And finished for his third, 23rd goal. That is, of course, the team lead. Spurgeon and Koivu. Koivu, yet another assist. He's just been unbelievable again. Not just in the box score, but physical, defense. Actually doing things correctly in the right place, the right time. And like always, winning face-offs. That's the good part. He actually wins face-offs, unlike a lot of other people out there. Uh, the Wild really had to play some... They really had to get physical. They had to really... Uh, clamped down in order to prevent Carolina from taking over this one. It was a pretty scary moment along the way. The Wild actually blocked 26 shots in this game because Carolina was so aggressive. Think about that. Think about that. I mean, that's a lot of shots <laughs> blocked. Luckily, the Wild did, again, like I said, clamp down in that in that third period. Otherwise, Carolina might have taken over and won this game, and that would have been a probably one of those type of games where... Boy, it could uh, really change the momentum of the season. It could screw up this whole run, and then God knows what can happen. I mean, you could not afford to lose a game at home against the Carolina Hurricanes with how poorly they've, they've been for quite a few years now, despite the fact they, ha they have some good players, but not enough. Not enough without a doubt. So, there it is. The situation with the injuries. The Wild have been overcoming it to date. Jordan Schrader, again, like I said, replacing Jason Zucker, but uh, at least on the roster. But he's pretty much on that uh, third line or fourth line. I'd say, yeah, he's on the uh, yeah he's on the he's on the fourth line right now. Or actually, no, he's on the third line. I keep getting screwed up. <laughs> it gets, it's all over the place. But yeah, Halla, Halla and Schrader kind of bounce around a bit. Sometimes he's Halla's down in the fourth with Brozniak, and sometimes he's up in the third with Charlie Coyle. But right now, yeah, I mean, the lines have been uh, Coyle on the third with Niederreiter and Schrader. That line's been playing fairly well as well. 
The second line, though, was unbelievable last night. And again, Quaven Parisi and Pominville have been playing fantastic as well. So I have no complaints with the current makeup, the current lines right now. They're all doing well for the most part. I mean, the chemistry's working right now. Stick to it. Stick to it, Mike. Yo, stick to it. And thank God we didn't blow the lead in this one. <laughs> so there it is. Time to get to the arts. It's time to get to the, well... I can't call it weekly because it's been a little more than a week. That's why we had six games to review. But uh, semi-weekly, we could call it. A little bit over a week. (laughs) Awards. The Mike Madonna Award, which, of course, is the player of the week, is going to go to Miko Koivu and, of course, an honorable mention to Devin Dubnik, who has been doing what he's been doing. But, I mean, Margot Scandell is another guy you could say is an honorable mention. He's been just unbelievable defensively. And he's even, you know, getting involved when when need be on the on the power play and such, on attacks. But overall, just a, a fantastic effort for Miko Koivu of late. Hopefully, he can sustain it this time. Hopefully, he doesn't get a minor injury and he's just a completely different guy. Or just for whatever reason, he just kind of drifts back into no man's land like he does every single year. So that's the hope. Miko Koivu has been uh, <laughs> he. He's been a James Shepard Memorial winner a couple times this year, but this this week, Mike McDonald Award, James Shepard Memorial, it's going to go to Spurgeon for that horrible play against Winnipeg. Uh, other than that, the, the guys in general have been playing fantastic, and I really have no complaints. So with that, let's take a quick break, and let's hop back into some previews. are back here on Brave the Wild segment number two, the preview segment going to preview four games today because uh, it goes up to Sunday next week just in case I don't record until Sunday next week, I like to record Saturday nights as Brave the Wild, it just seems to fit but last night was Valentine's Day, just wasn't going to happen, you know, it wouldn't be very respectful if I did that, and also just kind of the circumstances with the Timberwolves explosion which I like to record Sunday night it's the All-Star game right now, so <clears throat> that's another reason I probably should record Timberwolves Explosion tomorrow night. It works out nicely, and for those of you out there listening or waiting, wondering what the hell is going on with Purple Mafia, hopefully I'll get that done Tuesday night. I would like to finally get that in for those of you out there looking for my thoughts on the Super Bowl, now that it's like seven years ago already. Well, basically. Yeah, basically. Uh, also, one other thing, one other update I should let you know. I... Uh, Right there, obviously, you didn't hear the tall grass ad, and you, uh, let's just say you probably won't be hearing them anymore anyway. Uh, due to circumstances beyond anybody's control, more than likely the sponsorship is over. Uh, no ill will between anybody here. It's just, unfortunately, tall grass is making some changes. And the guy that I was working with was laid off, and so was his manager that <laughs> sent. <laughs> sent him to me. So I'm not sure where things are going to go with that. So um, again, no ill will towards anybody. It's just one of those things. Um, nothing bad happened. It's just, you know, sometimes things disappear. It just sucks if it if that's the case. We'll see. Um, so just giving you an update there. I'll be mentioning that on the other shows as well. Now let's get to the previews. Apologize for dragging that out probably longer than you may have wanted, especially if you're a new listener. Don't worry. I don't ramble on like that all the time. To, uh, other people that do listen would probably like to know about that. Monday, February the 16th, the Minnesota Wild head to Vancouver, British Columbia. Can we continue our great play against them? Yeah, I think we can. Because Vancouver's goaltending situation is not real good. Our goaltending situation suddenly is fantastic. Why not? Why shouldn't we be able to uh, do something here? And again, I'll talk about the playoffs uh, as I get to the end of this segment. I apologize. I was saying it. I was going to do it last segment. It's probably better that I do it uh, at the end of this segment. Anyway, the Wild 2-0 and against Vancouver. This is the season finale already. So we won't be seeing the Vancouver Canucks again this year unless it is in the postseason. And that would be quite something if it was. That would mean we maybe both made it to the Western Conference Finals or something because the way things are setting up here, both of us are pretty low in the uh, seedings right now. In fact, the Wild, again, are ninth officially right now. But, uh, yeah, 
just letting you know. And Vancouver's like 6th, 7th, 8th, you know, in that range. They've kind of been wallowing around in that area most of the season. This is going to be a very fun game. Hopefully the Wild can continue what they've been doing. Um, I wish the uh, depth chart was actually accurate because it's nowhere near. <laughs> yeah, I wish they actually did that. But, I mean, yeah, you have to actually... You have to actually watch the games to know what the lines are. And luckily, I do watch the games and I do know what the lines are. <laughs> so I'm not even going to look at that. It's just annoying right now. Uh, we all know about the Sedin sisters. We all know about, uh, well, Ryan Miller is not real good. Eddie Lack, I wouldn't be surprised if he's in net. And if I'm Vancouver, I have Eddie Lack in net because Ryan Miller has been beaten by the Wild multiple times this season. In fact, very recently, you know, just in the past eight days, the Wild scored four, four goals February the 1st, five goals February the 9th. Ryan Miller, not uh, not the answer right now. Don't be surprised if Eddie Lack is in that tomorrow night, but who knows. <laughs> Again, don't be surprised either if they stick with Ryan Miller, <laughs> which would be a stupid move. I think the Wild win this one. Um, I think their chances of winning are better if Ryan Miller is in net. And boy, if we sweep the Vancouver Canucks, whoo boy, <laughs> we'll be awfully close to passing the Vancouver Canucks in the standings. In fact, we'll have as many losses as the Vancouver Canucks, so... Very exciting if that era. No, what am I talking about? We have less losses already. I'm all all over the place. I apologize. We'll almost have as many wins as them. So really putting the heat on those Vancouver Canucks if we are indeed able to win. I like the matchup right now. Um, if Devin Dubnik can get the job done and the Wild can continue to score, we'll win. But if Eddie Lack is in net, it could be a tough one. We'll see because he's been, he's been good against the Wild in the little amount of time he was out there. He's no star or anything. But sometimes the backup's better than the starter, and the matchup could be a little tough. Uh, you know, his numbers are nothing special, like I said. He's only 5-6 and six on the year, 2.57 goals against average. But he might be a better answer than what Ryan Miller has been given the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, shoot, what, what has Ryan Miller done? He's given up like five, he's given up four and a half goals a game against the Wild in the past eight days. His numbers overall for the season are better, yes, I'll give him credit, and he has six shutouts on the year, so maybe I don't need to hate on him too much. But again, you, you get the idea. I'm bouncing all over the place. I'm going to say the Wild win this one. It's going to be lower scoring, and it's going to be close. 3-2, to two, Minnesota is going to escape. I think Vancouver is going to really put the heat on Dubnik. He might have to make like 35 saves in this one. Uh, but I think I think he gets it done. I think the Wild win this one. There's going to be uh, some very physical play, some very aggressive play. Um, hopefully no one gets hurt, obviously. But I think the Wild win the day. You might see another goal from Pommetville. Uh, another one, you know, another goal from Vanek. Stuff like that. Hopefully, we'll, 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 we'll see how that new line continues to work together. We'll see if they're a big key in this one. Because if they are, why, boy, they could be, it could be a lot of fun. Maybe, uh, yeah, the new line with Fontaine, Vanek, and Granlin. Maybe they're, they, they ultimately might be the key to this one. We shall see, indeed. Let's continue. Four games to preview, three to go. Minnesota Wild head to... If I could get this thing to... Uh, Minnesota Wild head to... Yep, it's the Alberta trip again. We head to the Saddle Dome Wednesday, February 18th. So we go from British Columbia to Alberta. We're in Canada all week, ladies and gentlemen, until we come home to host the old North Stars on, Saturday, on Sunday night. We always play the Stars on the weekend. Did, did you ever notice that? It's almost always... Oh, excuse me. We head to Calgary, Alberta... <laughs> Excuse me. Man, I'm choking to death here. Pardon me. Whew, trying not to... <laughs> Calgary Flames hanging on to that last playoff spot as we speak. Minnesota beat them one nothing just recently. Now we head back to the Saddle Dome again. Can we get it done? Uh, one nothing. That's kind of a tough one. Oh, boy. I, and they really came at the wild with everything. Playoff atmosphere. It's going to be a major playoff atmosphere with Vancouver. It's going to be a major, major playoff atmosphere with the Calgary Flames. Man, it's like our old division rivals are really uh, making things interesting now. And it's kind of fun. And we've had some nice success against our old division rivals, haven't we? <laughs> Vancouver. And, of course, we beat Calgary one nothing. We barely beat them. And they were quite scary to watch. And Dubnik just slammed the door. And the Wild kept playing great defense along the way. <sighs> to be fair, to be honest... I don't know. I, I think this is an overtime loss, shootout loss, something like that. I think the Wild get a point out of Calgary, but they don't win the game. Uh, we can't win every game, and everyone knows that. And the Calgary Flames, I mean, they were so close to scoring in that one. This is going to be another grinded-out defensive type of game, but I think the Flames are going to win it 2-1. to one. 
via, via it a an overtime goal by whoever it is. And of course, yes, Marcus Granlin is a younger brother on this team, but he's not really doing all that much there. Certainly not the prospect that Mikhail Granlin is. Um, but man, that Calgary team, they play some good defense. The Jonas Hiller is a great goalie. And even Ramo is pretty good too, the, uh, the, the backup. Lots of talented players on this team. No superstars really to mention, but lots of talent in general. Uh, again, I'm going to say it's going to be a two to one kind of grinded out physical game that we're going to wish we we're going to wish we won because Calgary's going to yeah hang on to that final spot I think at least for the time being. I hope I'm wrong, but again to be fair, you got to think we're going to lose somewhere here. I think we beat Vancouver and lose to Calgary. That's where I'm leaning right now. I'm liking the matchup more with Vancouver. I think Calgary played us awfully tight last time, and I'm scared kind of going into this one. I, I mean, I don't know. If, if we're undefeated in Calgary, go us. That's all i got to say there. That'd be pretty awesome. We'll see what happens. We, ho- we host them later in the season for the wrap-up. We head to Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, yeah. Friday, February the 20th. This is definitely going to be a win for the Wild. At least I hope it is. <laughs> Hopefully uh, losing to Calgary isn't some kind of like a, a real negative for the Wild. We'll see. I don't think it will be. I think the Wild beat Edmonton. Even even if we stunk right now, I think we beat Edmonton. I like our chances against them, obviously. Lots of talent. Clint Hammer, guys like that. <laughs> Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Justin Schultz. I mean, my goodness. Lots of talent overall. Fastest, not the best goalie ever, and that's what's going to help us along the way. Last time, though, the Wild went 2-1 to one with Charlie Coyle's heroics late in the game. A great uh, breakaway and phenomenal play against Fasteth in that one. I think the Wild score more this time around. I could see more of a 4-2 to victory, and that's what I'm going to go with right now. It's going to be an offensive game this time. I don't think it's going to be grinded out, but eh, watch. It will be again. But I'm going to go with 4-2 to Minnesota. We beat the Edmonton Oilers in, of course, regulation. And it's going to be a more entertaining game for the Wild. We score, I, I think we're going to have a couple of quick ones along the way. We're going to score like two or three of those goals very close together. Like the Parisi, Pominville, maybe Fontaine, somebody like that is going to score uh, very close to each other in this one. I'm sure Ben Wapulia, boy, <laughs> from the Stanley Cup Finals to Edmonton, ouch. And this is a team that I've constantly, constantly been on about like they're going to be they're going to break through this year and they're going to be a playoff team because of all the young uh, prospects on this roster. I was like that with the Islanders. Well, you know what? I was right about the Islanders because they eventually did break through and look at them right now. They're going to be having home ice in that Eastern Conference at least for a while, if not the whole way. Edmonton Oilers still just have no idea what they're doing right now, and it's kind of sad to watch considering what a just what an awesome organization they were long ago and really even for quite a while into the 90s. Kind of sad. An organization we all hate, and an organization that's uh, still pretty close to us, but luckily we (laughs) overcame them, along with the Colorado Avalanche. Now they're back where they belong, below us in the standings. Doggone it. Dallas and Colorado. Dallas Stars come to Excel Energy Center. Nice little rival for the Wild. This is again Sunday, February the 22nd. Their record, well, I mean, they... They've had a nice season in general, They've, but they've not been having the success that they would like overall. I think the Wild are a little bit pissed off after that 7-1 to debacle back on January the 3rd. That was kind of like the low point of the season. 7-1 to in Dallas? Come on. I thought the Wild were better than that. 7-1. <laughs> to one. Darcy Kemper, Nicholas Backstrom, just, just absolutely doing the Wild no favors in that one. The Wild were very successful against the Stars before that game. Beating them four to one, November the first, two to one, November the fifteenth. Late in November, we win uh, in a, in overtime against the Stars, five to four. That was kind of a scary one in Dallas, but winning in Dallas, very cool. Back to back wins at Dallas, as a matter of fact, and then of course getting slammed seven to one early in January. I think the Wild get revenge on this one, and we win. And this will be on NBC Sports, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, that's going to be very cool. 7 p.m. next week, Sunday. I think the Wild win this one on national television, and I think they make a little bit of a statement here, too, thinking, hey, you know, I mean, we didn't appreciate that 7-1 to garbage, and, of course, we, we weren't that bad. We're going to prove to people we weren't that bad. And, obviously, there's a lot. Of, there's no love lost between these teams. There never will be. I think the Wild win 4-1. to I think the Wild win 4-1 to over the Stars. It's going to be a sound victory, 
And we're going to all be uh, feeling feeling good about the Wild this week once again. I think the Wild get a point in every game again. I think they continue that along the way. Might be a little bit too optimistic, but at the same time, look at their schedule. It's not like we're playing Anah- Anaheim, St. Louis, and Chicago every day. So, again, and Nashville, for crying out loud. <laughs> My God, they're good. Oh, I mean, you just look at them. Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, they're just sick, sickeningly good. They're, what, like 20-some games above 500. That, that is just unbelievable. National Predators, I don't see us beating them at any point right now, and that, that kind of sucks. Barring some kind of awesome, like, uh, run in the postseason, we beat them in seven or something on the road. We'll see. But there it is. I think the Wild have another very positive week. They take advantage of a fairly easy schedule and some good matchups along the way, and they win some games here. Very cool. And the schedule... Well, we go. We, we host Edmonton next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, not this coming one. And then we go to Nashville and Colorado. It's going to get interesting there to wrap up the month of February. We'll see where things go from there. But very happy, very optimistic as we move into next week. And before I sign off for this segment and jump into the final brief segment with the Iowa Wild, let's look at those standings. Let's, let's see where all the Wild are... are going into the postseason right now, or the chances are, and such. Overall, the Wild right now, unfortunately, the Calgary Flames were able to win last night. They were tied with the Calgary Flames last night <clears throat> after we beat the Carolina Hurricanes in that, you know, that back-and-forth mess that it was. But then the Flames were able to overcome. They were hanging on, and, and they were able to beat the Winnipeg Jets in a, uh, well, Vancouver Canucks, pardon me, in a pretty important game there. And they won. Six, so now they have 65 points. The Wild have 63. LA Kings 62. Stars at 60. 57 points for Colorado. A lot of teams still very close here. Jets have 68. Uh, the Sharks have been playing very poorly. And they're only three points ahead of the Minnesota Wild right now. Yet clinging, still clinging barely to the number two spot in the Pacific Division. If you can believe that. I wish we were in that division because we would be having some home ice advantage here pretty soon because I think we could beat the Vancouver Canucks and the Sharks aren't doing themselves any favors despite the fact they did win their most recent game, unfortunately. (laughs) Otherwise, they'd be be down in the wild card standings and the Canucks would be holding on to number two. It's going to be extremely interesting to see where things uh, come together here. Very encouraging for the Wild, again, that we're only five points behind the Winnipeg Jets now. It seemed like that was an insurmountable deficit with the Winnipeg Jets. Chicago Blackhawks still, gosh, they're 11 points ahead despite all this. Blues 15 points ahead and the freaking National Predators 19 points ahead. Pack a lunch there. They are unbelievable. They've won five in a row and <laughs> no one's going to stop them right now. You just look at the goal differential for all three of the teams in the Central Division and it just shows how stiff the competition is in the Western Conference, but especially in the Central bleeping division. National Predators' goal differential is plus 39. The Blues, plus 41. The Blackhawks, plus 41. Blackhawks have been playing better again after that really rough stretch they were going through. They've won two in a row. Doggone it. (laughs) They're back at it again, and that sucks. I mean, it's just, but you look at those differentials, and then you look at Anaheim. They're only a plus 11. San Jose Sharks are only a plus 2. Isn't that crazy? The Flames are a plus 18. They have the best goal differential in the Pacific Division, yet they're clinging to the final wildcard spot by only a, with only a two-point lead. It's just crazy how things turn out. It'll be a win in blowouts and lose, lose in shootouts. <laughs> Gosh, it's crazy. There's a lot of that throughout the NHL. And a lot of teams that are way, uh, they're, they're well above 500, yet their goal differential is horrible, like Florida. They're minus 18. Man, that's something else, isn't it? When when you look at that, wow. Um, New York Islanders, yep, number two seed in all of the Eastern Conference, only one point behind Montreal for number one. Tampa Bay's having a great season. It's just, it's kind of cool to see teams like that playing well rather than the same old you know Detroit's all the time, even though they are in it. But uh, it's nice to see teams like the Islanders, Tampa Bay Lightning, and such in there. Yeah, instead of just, you know, the same old story over and over again, like New Jersey and, and Philadelphia. It gets kind of tiring and old after a while. So, there you go. The wild chances of the, making the playoffs right now, very, very good. Very good. They have a very good shot at making it. Uh, obviously, long way to go. And if they keep playing well, there's no reason to believe we won't be in the wild guard. It just sucks that there's pretty much zero chance we're going to get into the division leader uh, 
statistic now. That obviously, how they do that, the top three teams in the in each division, almost no chance we catch them. And if we do, wow, that that's an accomplishment. And then it's really time to watch out for the Wild come playoff time. But we'll talk about that when the time comes, indeed. So with that, we will take a break and we'll briefly check up on those Iowa Wilds. back here on Brave the Wild. Final segment. Going to check in on the Iowa Wild very briefly here. And also, I would like to ask you to please join the uh, the Facebook page if you could. Just simply look up Brave the Wild on Facebook. Click on the one that says page, not group. Page, not group. Just simply go there, click like, join the page, and comment about the Wild. Say anything you'd like about the show. And don't forget to call into our phone lines. 209-736-7877 would be appreciated. And the Twitter account at BraveTheWild.com. So let's check in on the Iowa Wild. This will be obviously very brief. Tyler Grayovac. Grayovac Batteries. <laughs> no, whatever it is. Um, well, he's leading the way with 34 points. Still along the way. Really good. After 50 games, he's clearly the best player on that team right now. At least on the scoring side of things. Brett Stutter has been solid along the way. Zach Phillips finally scored a goal, his sixth of the year, and that's all he's done in the in 46 games with now 14 points. He was at 13 for, like, forever. I remember he was at 11 for, like, forever as well. Just drove you absolutely nuts. Stefan Veyu is no longer down there. He's up with the professional club. Brett Balmer's doing a whole lot of nothing in about 40 games. Um, just, uh... Not really sure what to think about this overall right now. Jordan Schrader, who had been playing very well down there, almost a point a game clip. He'd actually probably be leading the team in scoring had he uh, still been down there. He's doing a nice job in the NHL level, and I'm happy to have him on the wild. He was a, he was a first-round pick for the Vancouver Canucks, which I probably mentioned 15 times already. So he was supposed to be good. He just wasn't, he wasn't living up to it. Luckily, he scored against Vancouver, which I'm sure made them feel really good. <laughs> Darcy Kemper has now played five games with the Iowa Wild. His goals against average is in the threes, and he's now back up with the Minnesota Wild. So, good for him. Very happy in that side of things. His uh, rehab stint is done. He is now back up with the NHL's Minnesota Wild. Other than that, the other uh, there's no really other major prospects on the current, current roster here for the uh, Minnesota Wild on the uh, Iowa Wild at this point in time. I know there's other there's other major prospects out there in in the systems and such in college and in juniors and, in, and you know and overseas and all that but for the for the prospects on the Iowa Wild it's it's fairly thin right now unfortunately because most of them are up with the Wild due to injuries or due to the fact that uh, well they they made the team obviously over the course of time Matt Dumba is obviously up here he'd been kind of up and down over the course of time Zach Phillips was a guy who was looked at a pro- as a prospect at one point in time He's clearly a bust. Grayovac looks like he might be a find with that seventh round pick because he performed fairly nicely in the little three games stint he got with the Wild. Again, Brett Sutter is a guy I think the Wild have been kind of overlooking a little bit. Not sure what to make of that. And Jonathan Blum's okay. He's an okay solid defenseman down there for the Iowa Wild. He's pretty much a call up when someone gets hurt or whatever. You know, whatever happens. Maybe there's some type of major trade and you need somebody to fill in for someone else. Or maybe someone's sick or God knows what. You get the idea. It, it kind of is what it is. With that, I'd like to thank all of you so much for your support of this show, and I would like you to please <laughs> do rate me on iTunes if you could. It'd be greatly appreciated. Um, Five-star rating, four-star rating, whatever it is, even a three-star, anything below that, eh, whatever. That, that's not necessary. You know, you're just trolling anyway, right? <laughs> and I know this show isn't perfect, and because no show is perfect. No show is perfect. You'd be getting 50 million listeners and your show is still not perfect. So just uh, reminding you about that. Again, uh, hey, hope you like the uh, different format. It's something I was able to whip together (laughs) over the course of a bit of time tonight. Got uh, some sound files to put a show together. And, of course, got the software up and running on this different uh, laptop, which isn't the... uh, which isn't the most state-of-the-art thing in the history of the world, but it's doing the job. And that's what counts. 
Really hope you do like it. Let me know what you think about the different format. Maybe it'll be permanent if you really love it. And if you hate it, well, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, I'm going to do the best I can. Hope hope, for, <laughs> hope to make it better and better on a, on a show-by-show basis. Thank you again for your listenership. Go wild, and let's get into the postseason. 